When we create a transaction, by default, Genexus will create associated tables to store the data entered from its screen. But Genexus already offers a solution to initialize the data corresponding to a transaction. To do so, the transaction has a property located under the data group and called data provider. Let's see it with the category transaction. By default, it will be set to false. We'll change it to true. In this way, we're indicating that there will be an associated data provider. Also, in this new property, we indicate that we will use it to initialize the table data. When we save, we see that an object of data provider type called category data provider has been created. In addition, if the business component property of the transaction had not been set to true, it would have been automatically set to true in order to create the business component associated with the transaction. If we open the data provider, we can see that it offers the code for us to complete the category's data. This code is almost a copy of what we did manually before. So, we copy the code that we had written into the new data provider. In this way, we've defined how the data provider will assign values to the new categories that will be created. What we haven't figured out yet is the moment when this data provider will be invoked to perform the task. The right moment will be when the table is created in the database. However, in order not to overload the process of creating tables, Genexus will delay running the data provider until the moment the application is executed, which will be when we really need the data to be in the table. In this case, the table has already been created and will not have data because we will delete it. We click on Remove Data to delete the data in Category and Attraction. However, since we've just enabled the initialization of data in the transaction, the next time it's run, Genexus will run the data provider. Note that if the table already had data in that moment, because the identifier had been set as auto number, it would add new records. In other words, it doesn't matter if there was already a museum category, it'll insert another one. This is not the case here, because we took the precaution to empty the table first. However, if the identifier wasn't auto-numbered, we would have to indicate this value for each new group of the data provider. And, if there are already records in the table with the values we're adding, they will be updated. When trying to perform the insertion using a business component, it'll find a duplicate key, and there what it does is to perform an update. Therefore, in this example, it would change the name value of the museum category for this one with many M letters. Well, to populate the attraction transaction with data, we'll do the same thing we did before with category. We run what we have done so far, F5. Note that the navigation list informs that the initialization program of the category table will have to be run, and that of the attraction table as well. And when it's executed, we see that it did run those programs and we have data in the tables once again. Let's take a look at the identifiers. Remember, they're auto-numbered. If now or later, we need to change the initialization data provider by adding, for example, a category that we hadn't thought of at first, after pressing F5, Genexus will realize that the data provider has changed and it will run it again. But in doing so, as the categories museum, monument, and tourist site have already existed in the table with auto-numbered IDs, it'll then reinsert them with new IDs in addition to inserting the new one. But we have a way to avoid this, by creating a unique index for the category name, so that it's checked before inserting the record that this value is not repeated. But we won't do that here. We run it and will manually delete the new duplicate records. Note that in all other aspects, the transaction keeps working as usual. This is to say, we'll continue inserting and deleting its data from the screen as usual. Also, its rules will be executed. 
and we'll be able to use the associated business component as before. What we've seen only affects the initialization of its data. But if the transaction contains information that does not change over time, such as, for example, countries, states, or provinces of a country, a system's parameters, and so on, it's not necessary that the transaction or business component allow us to update their data. To make sure that the data is not changed, we set the update policy property to read only. So far, we've used the transaction as usual, where the transaction has its associated table. On the other hand, we have other cases where the transaction data is obtained from other sources, which may be complex queries to the database that include looking for information in several tables or querying other databases and so on. In this case, the transaction will not have this associated table because the data provider is responsible for obtaining this data. To use it in this way, we set the used to property to retrieve data. These transactions are called dynamic transactions. In sum, to populate a table with data, we wouldn't do it manually as we did in the previous video. Instead, we would use the data provider property of the transaction.